When you see men fall, don't laugh. Learn. Because you're on your way up. And the things that tempt people to fall, you and I are not free from that temptation. A great man once said, when you see men fall, don't laugh, learn. Because you're on your way up and you and I are not free from the things that tempt people to fall, not from the weakness that will cause us to stumble and fall. When you laugh at somebody's fall, be they house or evil, you're about age or white or black, thin or fat, rich or poor, your enemy or your friend, you are laughing and opening a way for your own downfall. To laugh and not learn, to make mockery and not to understand, is to make the same mistake yourself. Why do I say this? In recent times, we have seen so many skits about PDD, and then close at home, we see all manners of things being said about Godwin Obasaki, the governor of Edo State. This made me wonder why we are one to celebrate the downfall of men. Don't you know that every man has a season of darkness? Don't you know that a man's fall is not the end of his life? Don't you know that when you mock someone, you are operating in pride? And pride goes before a fall. That's right. Your own fall is around the corner. Stop celebrating the downfall of others. As Christians, we are called to lift people up when they fall. We are meant to clothe the naked. This means forgiving their transgressions the way God forgave our transgressions. We are burden bearers, not burden creators. One of the first lessons I learned as a new convert over three decades ago was about the sin of shaming those who fall. When you are newly born again, you are on fire for God. It's so easy to see everyone else as a sinner. You are preaching repentance and damnation for and to the unsaved. One of the first things you learn is that you should not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. And as such, I cut off one of my closest childhood friends. In my mind, I labeled him a sinner and fornicator. I said avoiding him. As far as I was concerned, all things are passed away and he was certainly part of the old things. This is where it gets interesting. Do you know it's very easy to go from preaching repentance to the sinner to sitting in judgment and condemnation over the sinner? In judging and condemning him a fornicator, I soon fell into that same sin. The spirit filled and tongue-talking new convert had tripped up. And this was when I first came in contact with Apostle Paul's treatise to the Corinthians. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. You who think that you stand, beware so that you don't also fall. You who think that it's by your own power and might that all is going well for you, beware that your season doesn't change. You who mock the poor and afflicted as lazy and foolish, beware so the same affliction doesn't knock on your door. I used to laugh at my brother-in-law for being overweight. Look at me now. Don't judge. Don't condemn. Let each man work out his salvation with fear and trembling. You mock a man in his season of darkness, but you don't know that God is right there in that darkness fixing him. How do you laugh at a woman and say she's barren? Who gave you power over life? This is how people jeopardize the destinies of their descendants because they sat in the place of pride and mocked others. This is why Americans say, lose lips, sink ships. This means be well careless talk. This phrase which originated on propaganda posters during World War II was created by the War Advertising Council to advise servicemen and other citizens to avoid careless talk that could undermine the war effort. The British equivalent used was careless talk cost lives. You'll agree with me that we engage in a lot of careless talk. This is why Bob Risky is making headline news in a country that has multifaceted problems. What's our business with Bob Risky other than to pray for him in love? Careless talk can also affect you that has a big mouth. Some people will just stay and be calling every woman prostitute 
Do you know the story behind your birth? Do you know what your sisters or daughters are doing? You see beggars as a nuisance as they converge on your car, but you don't know if a long lost relative is a beggar somewhere. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Do you know how many angels sent to help you that you have treated badly because they didn't fit the concept of who or what your destiny helper should look like? Women, treat your workers with kindness and respect. Don't abuse people's children because they come from a lowly background. God is always in the midst of the poor and lowly. Workers, stop stealing from your employers. You are stealing sickness and disease. I have deviated from my message, but I am sure God is talking to someone. They also mocked Jesus Christ because they believed his end had come. They forgot all his miracles. They forgot those he fed. They forgot those he raised up from the dead. Some of those who went for all his crusades were probably the first to say he was a fake. They laughed and scorned him, calling him King of the Jews. All those he had helped ran away. They watched as the mob ridiculed all the good work he had done. And in their silence, they became a part of those who ridiculed him. Never, ever stay silent in the face of evil. Never be part of those who rejoice at the downfall of others. Speak up or leave so that they know you don't agree with them. The Christ they mocked was the savior they had been looking for. But because he didn't come packaged the way they thought a king should look, they scoffed at him. It's not all about the outside package. Look inside and see a heart yearning for God. A lot of women missed out on who their true life partner should be because of packaging. Don't despise people because they don't look a certain way. Look at your picture from way back and remember that life is a journey. Don't mock the journey of others. The same sun shines on all men. The same rain falls on all men. And so they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Just the same way we crucify people around us. Those we know and those we don't know. As Christ walked towards Calvary, men mocked him for they thought his end had come. They were so focused on his cross that they didn't see where he was going. Men are so focused on your problems that they don't know you are walking towards your destiny. And so they hung him and he, he who they mocked, he who they called king of the Jews in his death became king of of mankind. In his death, the world lived. In his death, mankind was saved. In his death, men of all races, tribes and tongues now lift up holy hands in worship of he who they call their king. Never, ever, ever mock or despise a man because you perceive he has fallen. May God help us all. God bless you all.